school stream today is presented by Lynette... I should have asked you. Cataldo. Cataldo, thank you. Uh, who's a psychologist and case manager at Abacus Learning Centre. Uh, her presentation today is titled ABA in Schools, Supporting School Aged Children Achieve Best Learning Outcomes. So please make her welcome. Thank you. Hopefully everyone can hear me, so just yell out if you can't. But um, yeah, my name is Lynette and I work at Abacus Learning Centre. Um, Abacus is one of the there we go. Abacus is based in Hastings on the Mornington Peninsula and we provide centre-based ABA therapy for children with autism and we also provide an in-school ABA therapy program and this will be the focus of today's presentation. So my aim of today's presentation is to teach everyone a model or a framework of bringing ABA into mainstream schools which we're successfully doing on the Mornington Peninsula. So I hope that after this presentation, more schools will be able to adopt this, mo this model and um, yeah, start using ABA a little bit more. Okay, so, so why are we doing this? Well, what we're finding is that children um, with an ASD often go through an early intervention program and sometimes because of this, they're able to go to a mainstream school and do really, really well and they don't need any additional supports once they get there. But what we're also finding is sometimes they get into a mainstream school but they really, really, really struggle continuing to learn in a classroom environment. Also, a reason why we're doing this is because some children have been diagnosed at a much later stage and haven't received any early intervention and then by the time they get into school, they're needing additional supports. Additional supports such as learning assistance or integration aids are often provided or sometimes provided, but what we're finding is that um, a lot of our children with autism and with the support of the integration aid continue to, to struggle. So my colleagues at Abacus Learning Centre uh, felt that we needed to be looking at opportunities to embed ABA into the education systems that are already in place and thus utilising the funding that's all already available to the child. So they did that and they devised a model to better utilise integration aid support whilst bringing ABA into mainstream schools. So as I mentioned, uh, this program can be used for children who have gone through an early intervention program, but also for children who haven't received any early intervention. So some more reasons why it made sense to bring ABA into schools was because we know that learning in the classroom can be really difficult for children with ASD. It's the perfect environment to just highlight all of their sensory processing deficits. Um, there's lots of visual distractions, so there's often fans that are spinning in the summertime. There's these beautiful coloured times tables, posters all around the room. There's lots of um, coloured artworks that are displayed. There's auditory distractions as well, so there's lots of children talking, lots of background noise that's going on, there's sounds coming from inside the classroom but also outside of the classroom. The maintenance lawnmower man's often driving past. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a, a really huge auditory distraction for our children on the spectrum. There's also tactile distractions, so We've got their scratchy school uniforms, the, their tags scratching on the back of their neck, um, sometimes the pressing of the shoes against their legs because we often they often need to have their legs crossed. These are just all these it's all this sensory input that they're um, that they're receiving. There's also lots of interesting smells that happen in the in the classroom, and I'm gonna rather than highlighting those examples, I'll let you come up with with your own. Um, but yeah, basically we're asking our children on the spectrum to ignore all of these distractions whilst they're continuing to listen to the teacher and learn what the teacher is, is saying and what the, learn what the teacher's trying to teach. And we just feel that this is really, really, really big ask for, for our children with ASD. So on top of their sensory processing issues, they often have to try to keep up with the, the really fast-paced nature of learning in the classroom. So often topics are taught once and then sometimes not repeated until the following year. And with that minimal repetition, sometimes a child with autism hasn't learned, hasn't learned the concept at all. So we feel that the ABA in-school program really helps to solve all of these problems. 
Right, so how does our program work? Um, generally, the parents approach the school or the service provider and highlight a need for ABA to come into the school. Um, once this has occurred, the service provider and the school liaise and discuss the logistics of the program. So we talk about things such as the time costs, um, how it's funded, all that. If the school are then happy to go ahead and they accept the idea of the ABA program, the next step is to train the integration aides um, on basic ABA principles. So this starts with a full PD day where the basics of ABA are taught. So we go through what to teach, which is task analysis. We go through how to teach, so we talk about discrete trial teaching. Um, we also go through the importance of reinforcement and you know train our, train our integration aids how to deliver reinforcement. Um, that's age appropriate. We also go through, and this is really important, the, the importance of fading props. So often our, well, our main goal of our integration aids is to integrate our children into the classroom. So essentially every single thing that they're doing, we, would, we need to be able to fade or we would love to be able to fade. Um, so we, we really heavily go over the importance of fading prompting and how to do that. We also, and, and I guess another reason why this is important is because we don't want our children to learn to be prompt dependent. Again, in, also in this PD day, we go through basic data collection and we also go through behaviour management. So we teach, we teach our integration aids how to conduct, conduct functional behaviour assessment. Okay, so once our integration aids and the school personnel have been trained in ABA, uh, we then need to gather in information in order to develop the child's ABA program. So we need, to, we need to work out what skills they need to learn. We do this through observations of the student at recess and lunch, but also through classroom observations. And we, but we gather most of our information through what we call an initial meeting. And in that initial meeting, we invite pretty much anyone who wants to attend, but it's really important that we have the child's teacher, the child's integration aides, and their, pre and their parents present in that meeting. Um, so it's a really team collaborative process. And in these meetings, we generally discuss the, the student's strengths, their weaknesses, any particular skill deficits. We discuss social skills, as well as any behavior concerns that might be happening in the home or in the classroom environment. And that's how we set our learning goals. Okay, and what we're finding is a lot of the schools that we're currently working in decide to use these meetings as a replacement for their PSG, ILP or SSG, whatever your school calls, calls those meetings. Okay, so after we've gathered this information and we know what, what we need to be working on with our children, um, the service provider develops the program. So generally, school-based programs incorporate proactive and reactive type programs or teaching, um, and they're aimed at improving academics, social emotional development, communication, and sometimes behaviour management. So the proactive academic programs have generally come from information uh, gathered from the teacher, and where possible, we we always like to um, we always like to introduce important concepts in the students' ABA sessions first before they're introduced into the classroom. And this is because ASD uh, students often thrive on repetition and things that are familiar. Um, so by preempting the classwork, the, the classroom work, and by focusing to on topics first in their ABA sessions, this often leads to increased attention, a reduction in anxiety, and increased self-esteem because the child finally feels knowledgeable. Some of our proactive social emotional programs, these are ones that are aimed at increasing the child's uh, emotional awareness, empathy skills, emotional vocabulary, problem solving skills and social skills. And what's really fantastic about our in-school ABA program is that we're able to target social skills or all of these skills um, 
just before the child's about to go out to recess or to lunch. Um, you know, so whether that be role playing, how to ask to join in with their peers, or if that's just going over those steps um, that they should take in order to, well, what they should do if their friends say, no, you can't play with me. We can go through all of those problem solving type activities just before they enter those environments, so it's fantastic. Um, we also, in their program, if needed, we would have, we would have uh, programs to aim at increasing verb verbal communication and behaviour management. Okay. Alright, so we're going to watch some footage of some proactive programs. So this is a proactive program for this student because our teacher, the te his teacher has identified that in the following weeks he's going to be learning on ordering numbers and sequencing. So this hasn't been worked on in the classroom yet, but we're working on it in our private MBA session. Put in order. student has had um, experience of, of doing these types of skills outside of the distracting classroom, he's going to be at a much better position to be able to then demonstrate that skill in the classroom where all of these distractions are. Okay, so we're going to have a look at another proactive program. This is myself working with a student and we're going over his reading word list for the following week. So again, this hasn't been worked on in the classroom yet. Uh, all right, Tristan, I've got some more work for you. Again. Yeah. Try this Again, yeah. Look at it. What does that say? Sock. Oh, cool. And what does that say? Apple. You got it. All right, last one. Tristan, you're a superstar. Right, so that's so cool. Did you want yeah. one, two, three, six, and yeah. Yeah. So that's going to tell us something. Cool. So as you'd expect, he's now going to be in a much better. Uh, he's going to be much better prepared for his reading word lists when they're actually introduced into the classroom next week, because he's had lots of practice in his ABA sessions, and all of those distractions have been removed. Okay, so now we'll look at a proactive social and emotional program. Uh, this is working on his problem solving skills and it's one where we pose common, common problems um, that arise you know, at recess or lunch or just in general life and we teach <coughs> the appropriate response. So what, what should we do if you wanted to play with James at recess or lunch? Can I please play with you? Yes, you need to ask him. Can I please play with you? Alright, what should you do if you wanted to tell your teacher something, yeah, but it was done. mat time? Put your head down. Yeah. Awesome, you should. Really, really cool. Alright, what should you do if your teacher gave you a worksheet and you just didn't know how to do it? Put your hand up. And what would you say? I don't know how to do my worksheet. Really, really nice. That was cool. Okay, what about um, if you're at the shops and you got lost? Call for help. Call for help. Who would you call? The police. Yeah. Alright. What if you can't see any police at the shop? Uh, yeah. Okay. You could just go find an adult or one of the shopkeepers, the shop assistants. And you could say, I've lost, I've lost my mum or I'm lost. Yeah. Alright. Last one. What 
What should we do if someone tells you something you already know? Okay. Yeah, you should just say okay. That's really, really cool. All right, let me have a look what I've got for you. Okay, did you all hear that? Yeah, it sounds like, okay. I'm sorry about that. It sounds like um, the volume's probably not loud enough, but basically we had to, he, he told me pretty appropriate responses for all of the questions that I asked him. And, um, you know, he's now going to be in a much better position to be able to form those appropriate responses or those behaviours if they ever just crop up in his general life. Um, okay, the last question that I asked him, so I said, what should you do if someone tells you something that you already know? That was more working on a social skill with this little boy because what he would do is, whenever the teacher would say something like, okay, come sit on the mat and you need to cross your legs, he would, he would go, I know that, and he'd get really, really frustrated. Um, and he'd do this for any question, so even if we said, okay, we've got to cross the road and I want you to hold my hand, I know that. So it just came across a little bit rude, um, so instead we, we taught him to just say, okay. So now if we, if we say, I'll oh, come sit on the mat um, and you need to cross your legs, he just says, okay. <laughs> Okay, so we might talk a little bit more about our reactive type programs um, in our, in, our in, in school ABA sessions. These programs are generally aimed at helping bridge the academic gap by increasing the students' fluency of their foundation skills academically but also with their social emotional skill development. So the academic programs are aimed at in, yeah, sorry, so they're generally aimed at improving things like counting, times tables, spelling, reading comprehension, handwriting, those types of things. Because we feel that if the student is fluent in these more foundation skills, they're at a much, they're much, um, they're more able to keep up with the learning pace of their peers. Some of our reactive social emotional programs, these are ones that engage the student in reflective practices following incidences that have happened at recess and lunch or at school. Uh, these are ones, these are programs that are focused on teaching empathy or things such as role playing social situations immediately after incidents have, incidents have occurred at recess or lunch. Um, and again, we would also add programs to improve communication or behaviour management if needed. Okay, so now let's have a look at some reactive academic programs. Um, this one here that we're about to look at, this is working on increasing his fluency of his counting. And it's reactive because all of his peers are very, very fluent at counting up to 100, 200 even, and they've moved on to skip counting. But our little boy is still needing a little bit of work with it. Okay. Okay. Bye, bye. Then you can go play. Then do some counting. Can you count with me? Counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Okay. Alright, so this is another reactive program and this is just basically to help him improve his handwriting skills which again is really really challenging for a lot of our kids on the spectrum. Trace A. Yeah, 
feel the sounds. Is that it? Day. Oh, high five. Awesome. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can you put the train on the letter W? Cool. Yeah, uh, letter A. Awesome. Letter X. C. H. L. Oh, try again. Letter L. Ah, oh, you did it. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> And again, let's just try to help bump him up to speed with his same age peers because they already know all of their letters, all of their phonics. Um, and this little guy's still a little bit rusty to go. Okay. All right, I'll just skip some of these videos because I'm a little bit conscious of time. And we can always go back to them if you really want to see them towards the end. Um, all right, so once the program is developed and we've got a good mix of proactive and reactive programs. It's then taught to the integration aids and commenced in the schools. So we have the student, the integration aid and the case manager all working, working together. And the case manager is demonstrating how to run the programs. And then the integration aids, they have a turn at running the programs. Once we feel that the integration aid is confident in running the ABA programs, we, we then leave and we recommend that the school conduct the ABA sessions for one hour per school day. Um, we find that this works best if it's, if it's scheduled and planned into the child's school day, just so we can be sure that they're not missing out on any vital um, subjects, but also so the teacher can just simply let them know that it's time to go to ABA, just as they let other, other children know it's time to go to piano or violin or, or any other specialty classes that they're doing. Okay. So we've also found that some of our schools just make the decision that, that our children will do the ABA session rather than learning a language other than English. Okay, a few things that we, we are really mindful of in the school environment is when they're doing their ABA sessions, we want, we want all of those distractions that we spoke about earlier to be minimised. So the physical space where we do the ABA, we ideally want it to be quiet, minimal distractions, to just provide a really, really conducive um, space for learning. Okay, so often the, like the library or a small reading corner off to the, off to the uh, back of the room are really good, you know, really, really ideal locations. Okay, we have, lastly we teach our aides how to maintain data collection and this is so we can clearly track the students' progress. However, the data collection is very, very simplified compared to a typical ABA program we, and we remove all of the ABA jargon as well and this just makes it a little bit more adaptable to schools. So there, there's some examples there. Alright, so once the program is up and running uh, and the students receiving one hour of ABA per day, we don't just up and leave, we continue to monitor the program. And we do this by sending a case manager into the schools every fortnight. And when they're there, they can provide ongoing training to the learning assistant. They monitor the student's progress and ensure that the child is moving on and, and learning. Um, and they can also sometimes help with recommending behaviour management strategies based on ABA principles. On top of this, we have meetings with the psychologist or program director along with the teacher, integration aid and the student every term. The frequency of these meetings can be increased depending on the need of the students. But during these meetings, we, it, we gener it, it generally gives us all the opportunity to see what the students learnt in their ABA sessions. It gives us the opportunity to talk to the teacher about what's coming up in the following terms curriculum so we can add um, some new ABA programs to support that. And we're also able to add programs to continue supporting their social and emotional development. Again, any problematic behaviours in the home or school environment are discussed and behaviour management strategies can be recommended in these meetings too. Okay, so how is the program funded? Uh, this will vary across schools, particularly private versus public, but in general schools and the way that we've been rolling it out on the Mornington Peninsula is that schools have been funding the uh, Professional Development Day to train the staff. Daily one-on-one -on -one sessions are done in the child's current integration aid allocation time, so they're covered by the, pre the child's pre-existing funding. Parents and the, sorry, the parents fund the case manager fortnightly school visits 
and the parents fund the costs of the psychologist program director meetings every term. If the child has a mental health care plan, this can sometimes be um, subsidised under Medicare. So basically there's a one-off cost for the school and the parents fund the maintenance of the program. And this is often looked at really, really positively from our schools, which we kind of, we need that, it essentially to, to, for them to allow us to enter their learning space and, and you know, start an ABA in-school program. Alright, so the benefits to the school, I honestly can't speak more highly of this program. It really does benefit all involved. Um, what we found is that after, you know, uh, staff and integration aides have had a really, really clear understanding of ABA principles, they, and attended our PD day, they become very, very well versed in, in autism and behaviour management using ABA principles which has a flow on effect and sometimes the staff become more proactive in teaching and also proactive with behaviour management strategies. The aides time and skills are better utilised and they're given more responsibility for the students learning which often leads to them feeling more useful to be honest. Um, the school just generally feels more supported and the difficulty of planning their ASD students' curriculum is removed a little bit because I do think that it's, it's a big ask to expect our teachers to be expert um, in typical development as well as, as well as in ASD development. Okay. Benefits to the parents. Um, it's beneficial to the parents because they're reassured that their child's learning to the best of their ability and the parents get a chance to openly see what's being learnt in our meetings that we have every term. And because the ABA program is proactive in teaching, often students' problematic behaviours at home reduce. It's at a small cost to the parents because Abacus, are a, Abacus Learning Centre are a non-for-profit organisation and also because we're utilising funding that's already available um, to those students. Basically we're just maximising the benefits of this funding. And it's a much more affordable means of one-on-one -on -one intervention for children with autism. Okay. Lastly, most importantly, it benefits the students because they actually start learning at, a, at an amazing rate. Um, the skills are worked on in repetition until they're mastered, so there's genuine progression of skills and learning. We often see flow-on effects such as increased engagement in the classroom, decreases in anxiety because the children are familiar with the topics, they're more motivated to achieve, and they generally just find school a much more enjoyable experience. Most importantly, we believe that the program enables them to reach their full potential. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening.